but the use of the boom vang on the NS14 is a critical thing because we're not running a traveller and we're running a fixed bridle on the majority of the boats and with the stiffness of the mast, really the tuning comes down to what you do with the vang. Now as you can see here, with no vang, as you look up the sail, the sail is twisted very open and you're really losing all the power out of the head of the sail. Now as Tara pulls the vang on, you can see what happens to the sail. Now I haven't changed the main sheet tension at all and even with this strong wind, 20-25 knot gusts here, you can see how that leech is really standing up and flattened out the sail just with just a bit of vang use. Now the other important thing with the vang is running downwind. Now as I've eased the sheet back out again, you can see the leech is very tight. When you're reaching, you tend to find that you're running, you need to run slightly less uh, tension to power up the main slide. Tara again drops the bang back off. You can see the center of the sail gets deeper. And the head of the sail gets deeper and twists off a little bit. And all she's moved is one string line on the boat, that being the bang. Now getting calibrations for your bang is something which is important. And I have three calibrations only. One is what I call my zero point. And that's basically where the bang takes up the slack and where it would be to hold the main sheet on the center line. Okay, so that's sort of the tension there. And you'd put a mark as your zero setting. Next thing we would do would be to do the mark where you would just be initially getting your crew to sit on the side and start the hike. And that setting is generally determined by the design of your sail. And it's the point where you're pretty much standing the leech up with your main sheet. And when you ease your main sheet out, the boom doesn't lift in the air. Now you can see here, when I ease out the, the boom, first thing it does is move up in the air. Okay? Then it starts to operate sideways. This initial, initial setting for my first mark, uh, for my second mark, is actually the point where that boom stops lifting. So it's called the fraction side. Okay, you can see now, we're only moving sideways. Ribs flattened out, and which means you're getting consistent, constant control on that sail, and you're no longer taking the load of the van. Now, the final setting you go to is your dropping sheet high wind setting, and again, setting this is best done on the water. Loading a boat up on shore without normal rigging and sailing loads, you're putting unnatural loads on the boat. So, this last setting I actually do once I get out sailing on a fresh day, and both crew hiking and dropping the and effectively, you pull that bang on until you begin to get over the increases. So Tara, you just pull a little bit of tunnel on. Just pull those wrinkles there. That'll do it. Okay, you can see there, you're at the first point Tara. Okay, see what the sail's just done there? The bottom buttons are almost gone into an S-bend, and you've got overbend wrinkles running through to the clue of the sail. That means you've reached the design limit for that sail's luff round and you can't effectively pull any more vang on without just causing a crease and a fold off of the sail. And that's the three marks that would allow you to sail and reset whenever you need to on the course.